Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. You can see it's a uh, rainy day in April. April showers bring May flowers. So uh, everything is getting really green really fast and exploding. And we were doing a lot of work with the uh, trying to get some of that junk out behind the shed. Let me the show last you. couple days I've been doing a lot of work in the backyard behind the shed, you know, because you got to clear it out for them to be able to get back there. And I'll tell you, I haven't been back there in so long. I could not believe the overgrowth and everything that grew from back there because it's been years since I went back there. No reason to. And I've been doing a lot of work upstate neglecting it back here. So let me show you what I was okay, up against. Okay, so this is the vines and uh, some of the stuff that was behind. So I'm going to have to break all this up and bag it or whatever if I can. But I haven't been back here in 10 years behind the garage, behind the shed. Let me show you what's back there. Okay, here was the ladder. Look at this, there was old trees back here. I had to cut the trees. And, and then this thing, look at this trunk over here. Can you see that? Look at the vines on that trunk. Those are like wisteria vines. And then it goes into... Look at that. And all that's over over this fence here, my neighbor's fence. It's gonna be a tough one, huh? Look at that. And there's the other one, the other tree back there. It's gonna be a tough cut. Okay, six hours later, and uh, we got this all cleared up. It took uh, six hours and I guess a few bags of, uh... <laughs> they're not super heavy, but uh, if I can lift them with one hand, that should be no problem. But man, that was a lot I even cleaned stuff. up a little bit back here so that they're not tripping over themselves. And so it's been, uh, as you can see, it's been busy, busy couple days for me. And uh, so it's going to be a short one today. I was actually, you know, throwing a few pieces and things like that together. Um, one thing I want to talk about is during the comments last time, a lot of great comments. And thank you so much for, you know, chipping in and chiming in on on your thoughts and opinions. I'm surprised so many of you are don't like pine trees. You know, <laughs> a lot of people said, don't get pines. They, they just shed a ton of needles and they, and they leave a mess underneath. But, uh, I have a couple reasons for liking pines. I'll get into it one day, but, uh, I know what you're talking about. And they, they do have the, their own array of problems, especially being shallow rooted and, you know, in heavy winds. But, um, uh, the one thing I wanted to say is that, uh, one thing, a couple people said, you know, firewood, mentioned firewood. You know, I live in New York City, in case you didn't know, and in New York City, I hate this place, man. New York City, you can't have a fireplace. It's illegal to have a fireplace unless it was grandfathered in in an older house. But since 2014, our illustrious Mayor de Blasio signed a, uh, you know, no fire burning, fire wood burning, pellet, no pellet stoves, nothing like that can be in any uh, construction, any house. So, you know, uh, new construction or anything, they basically banned it. So, um, and you need all kinds of permits if you're going to have one. And it's, you know, believe me, if they don't want you to have it, you ain't going to have it. Just like a well. You can't have a well in New York City. You know, if you want to say, hey, I'm, I'm not paying that high water, you, you can't have one. You're, you, you're in with the program, whether you like it or not. So... The firewood, you know, you could put free firewood signs out there all day long and people, <laughs> it's just going to stay out there because, but upstate you put free firewood and it's gone in 20 minutes, right? Isn't that something how it works? So that's why I didn't do it. Anyway, let's start off. A good friend of the show by the name of uh, Thomas Dement sent in a package. Let me show you what he said. Now, Thomas sent this beautiful uh, Dement and Stevens uh, he, they, his, his grandfather owned a tractor dealership before a tractor dealership in, in Tennessee, beautiful Tennessee. God bless Tennessee, Tennessee and Texas. There are two holdouts in the United States. <laughs> anyway, they, uh, he owned a, a business. So he sent me this pencil cause he knows I like pencil again, California cedar, beautiful pencil. And, and you know, you look at a guy like me, you say, how can you get so excited about a pencil? You know? You know, I'll tell you something. You with just this one writing implement, which I think is probably the one of the best inventions ever made. You can have so much fun. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go upstairs, have a little fun with this pencil. I'll show you what we can do with a 50 or 60 year old pencil.
Now I'll tell you, you can give me a pencil in a few hours and uh, especially on a rainy day like today and I can entertain myself for hours just upstairs. If there was one thing I wish I, I had was artistic ability, you know, I wish I could have... You know, you're either born with that part of your brain that's an artist or not, and you know, I, I'm not, but I always wanted to do kind of artwork. And you can see how this works here as you move it down. This is a, a perspective thing that it, it makes it look almost like it's uh like it's floating here, you know. You see how that's drawn like that, right? That's pretty cool. And here's the other one, you know. Again, uh it's a perspective as you move back. And, uh, and you look at it, you can see it kind of changes. It looks a little bit like it's floating, right? And uh, a lot of fun drawing. It's just, this is, this is good times, good fun. Okay, I'm over here at my, my draw of drawers. And over here, a lot of people have been asking me, have I ever tried wood burning? And uh, I did it one time. I used to teach it for the scouts. And this is some of the, uh, the wood burnings I did that I would bring down and... and teach the scouts how to do wood burning it's a lot of fun we'll get into it one time here but the drawer above that this one here as you can see <laughs> is filled i don't know how many hundreds and hundreds of pencils advertising pencils from the 50s and 60s and you know so uh yeah, I've been collecting them for a while, and these are fantastic. And and if I went through them, I can't even tell you how many, you know, how many cool places are there. I might even have one of those uh, those pencils, those Ford pencils. Okay, over here in this corner here, uh, I have a display, a butterfly and moth display. I bought at Jacktown, and I remember the guy had his, and it was expensive. Nobody would even, you know, pay that kind of, but it was like $80, but I, I just had to have it. It was just so beautiful, and so many unusual and rare moths and butterflies and uh, you could see here the type i'm sure you've seen some of them but the reason i bought it was because of this one rare that's a lunar moth have you ever seen a lunar moth before that is uh isn't that beautiful look at that a lunar moth very rare but they used to be common. Now, uh, some interesting facts about the Luna Moth that a lot of people don't realize is that, uh, first of all, they're kind of a lime green. And uh, at night, because they're nocturnal, um, they tend to look like they're glowing. With the little a little bit of light, they actually look like they're luminescent. It's just they're amazing to see. I've only seen a couple in my life. Uh, they, are, they have a short gestation time, usually about May or June, and they only live a week as adults. Can you imagine that? A week. So, although they're not um, a rare species, they're usually not seen too often. So, if you've seen a Luna Moth, consider yourself very lucky. And uh, let me know in the comments that you've seen one. Also, remember the old walking sticks? And this, I know for some of you people that live in, in areas that aren't overcrowded, you know, you see this stuff all the time. But for us that might live in a city, this is a big thing. I remember walking sticks used to be on trees. And... Uh, they were insects that looked like branches. And if, you, if you've never seen one, it's just an amazing thing. You say, how did nature come up with this? How did nature come up with, they, you know, that over the uh, so many eons that they developed eyes looking, you know, colorings. These moths would have eyes on the back of their wings that looked just like uh, eyes of an owl. So that the predators wouldn't mess with it. It's just amazing. You can't, if you're not amazed by that, something wrong with you. <laughs> okay, next up, I know I've been jabbering a lot this video, but I, there's a couple things I just want to talk about. The other day when I finished doing all that work, I was exhausted. I came up. I said, I'm going to watch a movie and relax. And you know, it was on the, uh, this Svengoolie, you know, it's, uh, it's on me TV, but the incredible shrinking man. Now I saw this years ago when I was a kid and I, it made an impression on me, a couple scenes because, uh, uh, that just sticks with you, the things you see as a kid. And, um, but I really didn't want to pay attention to the whole movie because when you're a kid, you're not paying attention to the backstory. You just want to see action scenes and things like that. But I watched this uh, in its entirety, and wow, was this a great movie. 1957, um, and it was the props. If you look at it from how this was shot and the overhead, sh you know, we grew up with a show called Land of the Giants and they used a lot of that in that, uh, series, but this was so, so good. And, uh, really enjoyed it. If you get a chance to see it, and I wonder how many of you remember this movie when we were kids, but if you have a chance to see it again, you should revisit it. 
great movie, The Incredible Shrinking Man. You can rent it or whatever at, on YouTube, and you can also, I think Amazon has It's just a great movie. Did you remember seeing okay, one that? of the reasons that this movie meant a lot to me now is because uh, there's a tarantula scene in it. And remember, we were talking about all the things we grew up with, all the, you know, the quicksand and the punji sticks and the tiger pits and tarantulas were another thing, right? Everybody was a tarantula on every show. And the best part of it was that, uh, you know, the tarantulas always seem to move like really slow and... And you always think, like, why don't he just move away? They're so slow. You can just, you know, just walk away from them. Well, it just turns out that one time I was training in Southern California, Camp Pendleton, a uh, military exercise, and, you know, it, it required us to be low crawling through fields of these high grasses. And uh, I came across a tarantula in the wild, the first one I've ever seen in the wild. And this thing was huge. And it's not like those pet store or movie tarantulas that look all combed and stuff. This thing looked wild. The hair, it looked like, you know how we look when we wake up in the morning. Your hair's all, you know, fotzed up. <laughs> well, anyway, this tarantula, I'm looking at it. And because I was only introduced in the movies to tarantulas, I figured, no problem. I'll just, you know, crawl around it. You know, it's, it, it's slow. I made a move to, to go around it. And this thing jumped two feet in the air like a, like a grasshopper. Just, I've never seen anything so fast and, and shot through that, the high brush like a rocket. And I was saying to myself, holy cow, I never knew they could move that fast. And it makes sense too, because if they moved like so slow, like they do in the movies, they'd never catch any prey. Same thing with turtles, you know? I think a lot of these animals, you know, kind of trick us to making us think that they're slow and docile, but you know, they, they wouldn't be around for a million years if they couldn't move fast and this, and tarantulas are fast. Okay, so much for a short video, right? <laughs> Last up, a good friend of mine, uh, my mentor, Dan Semmel, just said, hey John, do you have a, I need two bolts, he's doing a restoration, he needs two square head 716 bolts, about an inch and a half or longer. Um, and, uh, I want to see if I, I, now I checked, I have a lot of smaller ones, five sixteenths, quarter inch, seven sixteenth. I'm, I'm so let's see what we can now, do. Now I don't have the exact size bolt, but what I do have is I have a, uh, an nice old, uh, pipe tobacco or smoking tobacco. You see that model smoking tobacco. Look at that cool old can. And I have this filled with some odd size leg bolts, but a leg bolt and a regular bolt are, are similar, except that the, the thread is coarse and made for wood. Well, he only needs an inch and a half or less, I think. So we can use these two. These are half inch. We'll turn them down on the lathe to, uh, to the right size, the 7 16th, and then we'll thread them, right, with a die. I mean... On paper, it sounds good. Let's give it a now, shot. Now, to do this, the decimal equivalent of 7 sixteenths is 0.4375. So what we do is we take our, our caliper here and we set it to, you see, 4 and then 375, which we have here, okay? And then what we do, just to make things easy, we take an old spring caliper and we get it to the same, see the same distance here where it just slips through. So this way we don't have to use this on, you know, to keep checking on the lathe. Now we'll turn this bolt down till this slips over gently. And you can see it don't have much to go, but uh, this is a half inch. And we'll, we'll turn it down a little bit till this slips over. And then we'll have fun and we'll thread it with the die. Now, one thing that when you uh, mount the uh, bolt, because we have to grip onto the threads, so we're kind of hoping that this is going to run true because that'll make our job that much easier. So let's turn on real quick and, and uh, take a look at the shaft. That is beautiful. It's running nice and true. So now we know we can just cut it down, go to the right dimension, and Bob's your uncle. Now Dan's bolt only needs to be a you know no longer than an inch and a half. So what I like to do to make it easier on me is I like to make a little groove here until I can fit my uh, calipers over it here, and then I know that that is is the right size. And then once I have that groove, I could just run it back and forth and keeping that that groove. Then I don't have to worry about checking it all the time. So let's get to that right now.
Okay, we're getting real close. Now, remember I was telling you about the spring caliper. A lot of people laugh at these, thinking they're old-timey. You know, a lot of the early machinists used to use these. That's all they used. And now watch here. You see how this just passes over with just a little bit of resistance, right? So it means it's it's just a little bit over, right? Now, I'm going to take uh, here a modern caliper, put it on, right? Squeeze it down here. Get a, uh, a reading. I'll show you what we got. Now, we're at, you know, we're... Uh, about uh, 20,000 so over. remember 4375 is about here we're at about here now so we're very close you know and uh, we're going to take we're going to take another pass I'm going to clear this shoulder up because uh, we're not going to thread down that far but we do we don't want this too thick up here and uh, and then we'll take it over now the one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to taper this down because we're using a die, it's hard to get a die started. So I'm gonna drop this down quite a bit, taper this down so that the die starts easy. Okay, we needed this to be at 43.75. Let's see what we got here. Well, I'd say that's good enough for government work. Now we'll taper. See how we tape at the tip? And that'll hopefully make the die go on nice and easy. That was a fun, rewarding project. I kept these. Uh, these are actually the uh, shavings, or the swarf, they call it. Um, it looks like a filament for a light bulb, doesn't it? How thin that cut. And look at that. It's even springy. Isn't that pretty cool? That's, you know, that's what you get when you're, you're cutting this down with a uh, sharp bit. But here we go. We have our two. These are actually very vintage. And you can see here, these are uh, 7 16 by 14 nuts. And you can see how nicely... They go on with no play at all. You know, the, the front is tapered a little bit, but like I said, he only needs about an inch and a half. So we'll cut off uh, when he lets me know exactly how long he needs it. I will cut this, uh, what it, uh, but he only needs about that much. So there we are, two vintage uh, bolts from leg screws. And uh, I don't know if Dan needs the nuts, but I have them if he needs them. And always clean up your dies. And always clean up your die holders with WD-40 before you put them away because that that oil gets very gunky and it'll seize things up. So do that now. So there we have it. A uh, super fun, super rewarding project. I love that. That's my favorite kind of projects, you know, especially when they work out, you know. It's no nightmares. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great day. Special thanks to Thomas for the pencil. Take care now. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.